Hello, my friends, hello, and welcome once again to Stately Vaughn Manor. And today, I'm gonna to be talking about some fantasy because it is February Fantasy Stories, which is an event created by the bookish Bryants where we're reading fantasy, a mostly shorter fantasy. And so last week, last week seems like a long time ago, but last week was dark fantasy. And I had to decide what to read for dark fantasy. And then I thought, you know, there's nothing darker as far as fantasy is concerned that I can think of. Uh, nothing is darker than Cain. Uh, Cain, created by Carl Edward Wagner. Carl Edward Wagner, a writer of horror and fantasy back in the 70s, 80s, and early 90s. Uh, Carl Edward Wagner created this ca character, Cain, an immortal swordsman, an immortal warrior and sorcerer, basically. Uh, very, very dark series. Originally published in paperback with some great covers uh, by uh, Frank Frazetta. I'll throw a couple up up there because those covers were awesome and got a lot of people to read these books. And they should have read these books because these books were really, really good. If you're interested in uh, fantasy, heroic fantasy, that kind of thing, these books were pretty great. So yeah, these paperbacks were great when they came out. Um, I had all of the paperbacks uh, from Carl Edward Wagner and really enjoyed them. In the early 2000s, these were published by Nightshade Books. This two volume set, this collects all of his novels, Bloodstone, Dark Crusade, and Darkness Weaves. And this uh, is what I read last week. This is Midnight Sun, the complete stories of Cain. So this has every short story that was written about the character of Cain. The character of Cain was really, really interesting. Uh, like I said, this is dark stuff. About the darkest sword, sorcery, heroic fantasy kind of stuff that you can find. Uh, Carl Edward Wagner... Kind of a dark writer. Uh, Carl Edward Wagner was an interesting guy. He was an editor and writer. He edited uh, the Da horror, best horror stories of the year for a, for a long time. Uh, did a really good job of that. He was really good at picking out horror stories. He did some other uh, anthologies, um, fantasy anthologies. And he also did some anthologies or collections, actually, of some pulp writers that he liked an awful lot. He was really, really interested in the old pulps, like Weird Tales and some other old pulps uh, from the 30s and 40s. He was uh, a big fan of um, Manly Wade Wellman and was and had and became friends, a personal friend of Manly Wade Wellman. Uh, so he was an interesting guy, and he was an, a pretty good writer. Uh, he wrote horror stories, and he wrote. These fancies, the, the King fancy stories are probably what he's remembered for now, if he's remembered at all. Unfortunately, he's not remembered as well as he should be, in my opinion. Uh, fantasy is a pretty big genre now, a pretty important uh, genre. And he was a foundational figure, really, as far as fancy is concerned. Uh, he wrote really, really dark fantasy. So anybody who writes grim dark now is kind of following in his footsteps in a way. His writing uh, was similar in some ways to Michael Moorcock's. There were some similarities there. I think Michael Moorcock is the better writer. I think the Elric series is superior. But... This stuff is pretty great. I like uh, Carl Edward Wagner's work a lot, and I was reminded just how good this stuff is when I was reading this uh, collection last week for February Fantasy Stories. I picked the right book because Carl, Carl Edward Wagner's Kane series is dark. So who is Kane, and, and what is the Kane series about? So K the Kane series is about Kane. Who is that Kane? Yeah, that Kane. Uh, the biblical Cain who murdered his brother and was cursed 
by an ancient god to wander the earth uh, as an immortal. So he wanders the earth as an immortal, and he will wander until he dies uh, a victim of his own violence, whenever that is supposed to happen. So he's basically a, an immortal warrior uh, who wanders the earth, and he is cursed to wander the earth. He can't settle down, this guy. Interesting character, and he's an interesting character to read about because he's pretty much an immoral character. He's only out uh, for number one. Com completely, He's a character who's completely fueled by self-interest. Carl Edward Wagner had a very dark view of the world, and Cain has a very dark view of the world. And he's a character that doesn't believe in good or evil. Uh, he thinks these are just constructs created by human beings. And so, as far as he's concerned, he's, you know, he's looking out for number one. And he ends up being... A mercenary, a sword for hire, uh, an occasional wizard. He's, he, he, he does do some sorcery. It's just because he's, he's immortal and he's really intelligent. And so he just picks this stuff up. And he's, he's studied some magic. So he's an immortal warrior, a, a swordsman, who knows, some sorcery. Very, very dangerous guy. Spends most of his time basically being a criminal, to be honest. A mercenary and a criminal. Not somebody you particularly want to hang out with. Definitely don't want to get on the wrong side of this guy because he's a killing machine. His business is death. Okay. So every once in a while, he'll do something that, you know, could kind of be heroic. He's not all bad. But usually, yeah, this guy's pretty bad. And, and you get the sense, it is mentioned in these stories, just all the terrible stuff that this guy has done uh, over his extremely long lifetime. This guy's done it all, good and bad. Really interesting character. Every story takes place at a different time. Uh, these stories could be, could be hundreds of years apart. He could be in a city in one story that in, a, in the next story has been abandoned for centuries. You know, it's that kind of thing because this guy's immortal. And so he doesn't waste time, you know, getting into relationships with people, really. Because uh, to them, they're just all passing. Uh, it's interesting. And his motives are interesting because every story, you have to try to figure out what his motive is. Why is he doing what he's doing? Sometimes, like I said, he's, he acts kind of decently. You know, he's, like I said, he's not all bad. Other times, man, this guy. And like I said, very dangerous, this fella. It's a lot of fun to read this stuff, as dark as it is. And it's really, really dark, guys. These books, so dark. Just so dark. I mean, bad stuff happens in these books. This guy does some bad things. All the other characters are mostly pretty crappy, too. Uh, a bunch of terrible people running around in the Kane stories. So dark stuff, just so you know, going in. But really interesting. And the quality of the writing, for the most part, is really, really good. With the short stories that I read last week, most of the short stories are good. Towards the end of the volume, we get to some stories where uh, there are a few stories that take place in modern day, modern day being the 80s, where Cain is still around in the 80s. And so we move from kind of heroic fantasy, sword and sorcery type of stuff to more urban fantasy. And those stories, I think there were three of them, if I'm remembering right, those stories were not that great. Um, some of Carl Edward Wagner's later stuff wasn't the best, uh, when you compare him to his other, to the other stuff that he did. He didn't seem to take those stories particularly seriously. And I think he was at a different place in his writing at that point when he read the, when he wrote those stories. 
Uh, Carl Edward Wagner was a troubled individual. Uh, he basically drank himself to death. Uh, he died in 1994. He was born December 12, 1945, and he died October 14, 1994. I remember when he died. Uh, I was told about it. Uh, the owner of a bookstore, I was talking to, the, to this guy, and he told me about it. He broke the news to me. And I was just... I was kind of devastated because I really admired Carl Edward Wagner's writing. And I appreciated him uh, for all the work he had done in fantasy. Uh, he actually published uh, a three-volume set of Conan the Barbarian, which at the time when it came out was the only way you can get Robert E. Howard's Conan as these stories were originally published. Uh, so that was a big deal at the time. And he was just so talented, this guy. Uh, he was such a good horror writer and an excellent writer of dark fantasy. So I remember just how depressing that news was when I found out. Because he was not an old guy, you know. He was a younger man. And so that was a blow. Um, and his later writing probably wasn't as good as his stuff, the stuff that he was writing... Um, in the 70s and the 80s. Uh, and like I said, he died as a result of alcoholism. I think the official cause of death was uh, heart and liver failure due to his drinking. Um, so really sad. He had a dark view of the world, much like Robert E. Howard did. If anything, it might have even been darker. Um, but his writing was really powerful. When... Not everything he wrote was great, but a lot of what he wrote was really, really good. And some of it was great. I really like this guy's writing a lot. All of his novels are good. Bloodstone was particularly good. Dark Crusade, Darkness Weaves was fantastic. So all of his novels are worth finding and reading. Um, his short stories, most of them are really, really good. This is a character who's really, really interesting. And it's 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 a really really fascinating series uh just because this character is just such an interesting guy he's kind of terrible a lot of the time but really really interesting i mean he's not a savage barbarian he's actually cultured and intelligent um he's just you know immoral so it's interesting he's he he was created by Carl Edward Wagner to be kind of a gothic hero villain type, the kind of villain you'd find in a gothic novel who's evil, but you know, really, really interesting. Uh, so that's kind of where he was coming from with this character. I highly recommend this stuff. Uh, finding it in print though is difficult. Uh, you can still find the old paperbacks um, on eBay and places like that. This set is tremendously expensive now. I was lucky I got these when they were new. Um, I think they were like 40 bucks a piece or something when I got them. I don't remember how much I spent on these guys. Yeah, they were $35 each. Uh, now, these are very expensive. Uh, there were some other hardcovers that were published later that were really expensive. Probably the easiest way to find this series is as ebooks. You can get them pretty cheap right now uh, with terrible covers <laughs> on Amazon. Uh, I think they're like six or seven bucks each or something like that. And the numbering is wrong. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know why they're being published like that as ebooks, but they are being published as ebooks. And it's cheap enough. And they're, they're so well worth reading. I recommend you pick them up and read them. Uh, that is probably the easiest way to, to read this stuff. And like I said, if you're interested in fantasy and the history of fantasy, Carl Edward Wagner is kind of essential just because of the type of fantasy that he was writing. Uh, I think really, I mean, Michael Moorcock was kind of close and that a lot of his stuff was pretty dark as well. But this stuff, this was really dark. So yeah, I highly recommend Carl Edward Wagner's Kane. And if you're really interested in Carl Edward Wagner, uh, this book came out recently. Uh, this is Phantasmagoria, special edition series, Carl Edward Wagner. 
this is just has a bunch of stuff about Carla Edward Wagner and some stuff by Carla, Carl Edward Wagner. A lot of writers talking about Carl Edward Wagner, the writer, who was a really, really interesting guy. There he is there. I found out about this book from Adam White, Deshelved with Adam White, who did a video on uh, a couple Kane novels, or a couple Kane books, I think a, a novel and a short story collection. Uh, I'll link that video down below because that's really good as well if you're interested in Kane. You'll probably want to check that out. So, yeah. That's all I have to say about the Carl Edward Wagner Kane series. I will catch you not tomorrow because I'm going to be at the Rustic Vaughn Lodge with this terrible internet. But I will catch you in a couple days at some point on Monday. I don't know when. I'll put up the Robert E. Howard show. And until then, hang in there, guys. Reality is particularly terrible right now. So, you guys take care. I'll catch you next time.